Born in 1884 in Niagara, North Dakota, Nell Peters traveled to Storm Lake, Iowa for college from 1899 to 1903. Because there were no math or science options, her preferential field of study, she studied vocal music rather than the typical business course available to young women of the day. So what does a young woman do after college at the turn of the last century to combine her two loves, math and the arts? Well, she becomes an architect, of course. After college, she moved to Sioux City, Iowa and found work as a drafts lady at a local firm, ultimately qualifying for her architectural licensure in multiple states. The only woman in the firm, she was hired on a bet between two local architects and only after many, many attempts at employment. In 1907, Peters was sent by the firm to Kansas City, but eventually left to open her own shop, charging $15 to draft a plan for a small house. It was during this time that she married William H. Peters, a design engineer for the Kansas City Terminal Railroad. The marriage didn't last long, but Nell retained his name, as was the custom of the day. Peters didn't just set her sights on the field of architecture. She embraced it, and she excelled in it, and ultimately became one of the most sought-after architects in Kansas City history. I'm an architectural historian and a historic preservation consultant, and we frequently come across Nell Peters in our work. Her buildings are really wonderful. They've survived the test of time. Nell Peters was an extremely prolific architect, male or female, in any category. She is credited with close to 1,000 buildings. She designed Kansas City's prototypical colonnaded apartment buildings, small four to six unit buildings with large columned porches on the front. When zoning codes changed and required apartment buildings to be masonry construction, something more fireproof, she switched to that mode of construction and designed much larger buildings as well. Many of these are found along the Country Club Plaza. She also designed a hybrid type of building called an apartment hotel that combined the amenities of a short-term stay hotel, things like a dining room and different types of services and amenities with private living units of an apartment building. She did do a lot of mixed use buildings. The Ambassador Hotel is a great example, almost equally divided between permanent residential apartment units and transient hotel units, meaning they could be rented nightly. And then there was a restaurant in the building and several other commercial spaces on the ground floor. But how is it that a woman at that time in history was able to accomplish what she did? During the heyday of Peter's design life, when her buildings were going up all over the region, women were simply supposed to be home raising the children, not creating this. She was asked once in an interview if she faced obstacles as a woman in a man's world, and she responded that she never looked for discrimination, and therefore she never saw it. My sense of her is that she really just wanted to design and that was, that was her passion and that was what she focused all of her energy on. Nell E. Peters was a woman of many firsts, one of Kansas City's first female architects, one of the first to helm a firm, and one of the most successful architects of either gender in the early 20th century. But maybe the gift that Nell Peters provides us all is not just her designs or the buildings that beautify our fair city. Possibly her greatest gift to us is the sea of successful female architects and women-run architectural firms who have come after her, or maybe because of her. She gave us beauty. She gave many a place to lay their heads in simple and comfortable design. And she left the mark of a true craftsman, both with her impressive architectural offerings and in the lives she launched so many years ago. For quite literally changing the landscape of Kansas City, we are honored to welcome Nell E. Peters into the 2021 class of the Star Women's Hall of Fame.